Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 18 of my giant Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster suit, which is standing just behind me. If you haven't seen the previous episodes, you've got some catching up to do. Have a look at those. Basically, the premise is that it stands up by itself. I can climb in, unlock the joints, walk around, and when I'm bored of it, I can lock up all the joints again and climb out and leave it standing there as it is now. I've got snowboard bindings to lock my feet in, which operate remotely with cables. And basically the idea is that all the panels open and close again around me or whoever it is that wears it. So, uh, last time I worked on the chest plate, let's have a closer look at that. So I fitted the Unibeam in last time, which was a collaboration project with Adafruit. Have a look at the video on that. And uh, I built this chest plate um, on the frame uh, with panels that open. So the idea was there were going to be uh, basically a reveal. So when the panels open of the suit are climbing in and out, these open as well. You can kind of see me getting in and out behind them. And also we're going to have loads of wires and components that look like they're supporting the Unibeam. And these are obviously electronically controlled on the servos. So if you have a look in the X-Robots Group Project's Facebook page, a guy called John has um, posted a sketch of what he thinks it should look like. I haven't really decided myself yet, um, but if you've got any ideas and things you want to let me know, then join the group and post your ideas. So the idea is today we're going to continue working on the front of the suit here. We're going to work our way down the abs um, to the cod plate to see how that interacts with the legs um, and how it interacts with the arms. So I've got these fake pistons which are actually attached to sticks, which um, help the arms float here, and there's a bungee cord. So I've got some extra pistons, which were originally covering this bungee, which I'm probably going to repurpose for the abs. And what I want is multiple layers, so it looks like proper mechanics, um, and covers the silver frame to some extent. And obviously we'll get rid of the cardboard. Now we also need to make sure that anything below this frame is detachable, so that when I lift the body off for transport, I can just put it flat down and it hasn't got a piece there which will snap off so we need to make sure probably the abs are going to come off in one piece and reattach. I've drawn out in CAD what I think um, I want the abs and the rib sections to look like so some of these parts I've drawn here um, you can see are the wooden frame which is painted silver some of the parts we designed last time which are the chest pieces so we've got the unibeam holder there and the panels each side uh, mostly the red parts aren't 3D printed, in fact most of the silver isn't 3D printed, these are the parts I made out of foam PVC board um, and that goes the same for the parts lower down on the abs there, so I need to make this part that's detachable which um, means I can take off the abs and the cod plate so they don't sit too far below, so we can see there we've got these gold parts so I've got a piece there and you can see the two keyhole sections which uh, mean it can drop in and there's also a bracket just below the silver frame um, which it locks into and I've made provision there to allow either a piece of velcro or an elastic band to hook around to hook it on which is what that recess is in the back of the blue part to keep it in place. So um, it's okay to have small parts like this sitting below the frame. The idea is I need for it to take the torso off and put it down on the ground or put it in the back of the car for transport. Um, I'm probably going to put some big uh, 3D printed Ninja Flex rubber feet on the bottom for that so these parts will stick out are okay um, as long as the whole of the cod plate is detachable which is this gold part. So the panels that were on there, let me just... Um, Put those back there they are those are going to be foam pvc board again those are going to be shaped up with heat um, they're going to be a slightly different shape to that they need to sit flat where it um, matches the bottom of the chest plate and they'll be curved towards the edges and they also need to match the other red panels to either side of the chest plate which are not shown here um, and then i had this great idea for the ribs which was um, that they should actually float so the pistons I've got either side, which are basically a stick attached to the bungee that help the arms float. Um, I've decided I want a pair of those. And then it would be quite good to have panels for the ribs, which are these other red and gold parts each side, which are actually attached to those ribs. So as the arms move, the rib mechanics appear to move rather than them being fixed to the chest plate. So again, the red parts are going to be foam PVC board. Let me just hide those. And then we've got a 3D printed gold part which is going to sit there and attach the two pistons together and hold the foam PVC parts just in front of it. Now there may be other details to add such as some silver or black 3D printed parts um, like I've done with the other, the other parts. So basically things that look like bolt heads or hex heads 
um, but I haven't quite decided what that where those go yet so we'll put it together and have a look and the bottom of the cod plate also needs building which is going to be on the bottom of this tea, this gold T piece so here are the parts I need to print, that's the T-piece and its special holder at the bottom. I've actually gone further and cut holes in this piece so that um, basically it's not completely solid and also the holes take out some of the strains in the build lines so the ABS shrinks as it cools which sometimes causes, it to warp, causes the piece to warp but having holes in means it breaks that stress and also uses less filament. And the other two parts I need to print are of course these two um, rib sections which are a pair of symmetrical parts which will hold the cylinders and the red parts. So let's get those printed on the Lulzbot Taz and we'll see what they look like. my 3D printed parts which I've uh, sprayed gold as you can see and I've got my cylinders here which are originally covering the bungees on the arms and if you remember these are hollow in the back so they fit over the bungee um, I'm going to make some more for the arms when I come onto that uh, but for now these fit quite nicely onto these angled brackets so I need to glue those in place um, and then we can fit that on to the rest of the suit and I've got these recesses cut out which is where the ab panels go Okay, so I've attached the uh, pointy piece there, which holds the bottom of this, and I've glued my fake cylinders on. So this should just fit under here. There's two screws that I've screwed in there. We push that in there, and it should lock down and remain in place. Now it can pull forward at the bottom, which is what the um, hole was for, and the recess on the back of this piece, so we can put a Velcro strap or something tied round to hold it in. Uh, but it's pretty secure as it is. So, um, I've got the recesses on here to attach the pieces which I need to make next. And then we can put those panels on and shape them nicely around the rest of the chest plate. So here are the sections I'm going to stick on. Um, this is the same as the previous sections which are foam PVC board, also known as Foamex or Sintra. And I'm just going to heat them with a hot air gun. Um, you can easily heat this stuff just in a patch and bend it in a straight line fairly easily. So I've drawn some lines on the back, don't know if you can see those where I'm going to make the bends and we're going to do all three and then we're going to stick them on. So here it is, um, it still looks a bit gappy so I'd probably consider some sort of mesh or something behind there but we'll come back and detail that later. Um, probably also some conduit running down to the legs and I need to do something to cover the bottom of these cylinders which go nowhere at the moment. So it's probably going to be something else here. But let's put the ribs on and see what that looks like. So here are the next parts, we've got these 3D printed parts, again I've sprayed gold and the matching red parts, the cut out of foam PVC, so these fit on here. And I've got the holes cut in there as well, which hold the cylinders. So the original one will screw onto the wooden dowel, which holds the bottom cylinder. And then we need the top cylinder there, which is going to be attached to this plate. So they f both float together. So I've got my PVC pipes there, which are going to be sprayed up silver, the same as the others. Um, and these are fake pistons. They don't do anything. So basically the um, shaft is going to be fixed to the cylinder. And that's going to be done with these 3D printed inserts, which... Um, Got some of those for the other one as well and then this will obviously fit in here and I can glue that in place and set wherever I want to leave the thing so it's the right length. And then that gets screwed onto the top and we'll get that all assembled. So here are my other parts, I've got my other cylinder which is going to fit somewhere like that. And then this part with its screw holes you can just about see there hopefully which uh, will screw onto the back of this cylinder and onto this one so they're staggered and then we can set that angle something like that 
So the original cylinder is, unlike this one, which is completely round, if I just get this off here, oh, there we go, it's uh, basically empty backed and just clipped onto the wooden dowel. So this piece of wood we can screw the plate onto, wherever it needs to go, by just putting a couple of pilot holes in and screwing it on from the back and setting that angle and then we can screw the new one onto this as well and then put the two red parts on. So I've just tacked this piece on here with hot glue and I'm just going to use this little drill to uh, drill pilot holes. Like so. And we'll just screw those on with a, a little screw. You can't really see what I'm doing but uh, just screw in from the back straight into the pilot hole and everything should be held in place. Right, we're around the back. That's the the screws I've just screwed in there and the same on the other side so that piston is now attached to the wooden stick via this plate. So now hopefully we can pop back on our bottom piston which should just clip onto the wood. That's a pretty tight fit. There we go and we can add the other panels on. Right, so this one goes on here, so let's get some hot glue and tack that on. About there. Just around the back and make sure that's straight. And the other one goes on there, covering the bottom of the cylinder. So all the parts are installed and that now means that these rib parts float backwards and forwards with the arms. So if I just get behind here and grab these, you can see as the arms move forward, so do the ribs. So as you turn in the suit, you get uh, kind of a realistic rib action, which is quite good rather than it just being fixed solid onto the front of the chest plate. I decided that um, the abs there as I've got them look a bit gappy so I've um, basically designed some new pieces that fit in there and fill in the gaps which are these gold kind of perforated pieces so if we just get rid of these three um, we can kind of see that um, either side of the central part there we've got um, these two parts which are just going to be attached each side those are going to be acetone welded onto the removable piece um, on either side of the main section we've got these two pieces here which um, I've actually made provision to have screw holes in I don't know if you can just see that screw hole in there and there's two in the bottom as well of those pieces and I've also made these piston ends just to encapsulate the end of those fake pistons um, and once I've printed these out there's probably going to be some other details that will get added to the main chassis but we'll talk about that in a sec so let's have that back off there so here are my 3D printed parts which I've already painted up. So I've got these piston ends which I've painted in red. And those fit just on the end of each of those. So we'll glue those on in a moment. These two pieces actually screw onto the wooden frame so we'll put those to one side. But these pieces fit inside here so they go each side like so. So we can just see the perforation showing through. Um, I was going to acetone weld those onto the ABS but both parts are covered in paint now. So I'm probably going to hot glue those on and as with the other parts I've actually backed these up by putting hot glue from the, the behind as well to hold it. Um, 3D printed parts hot glue quite well because they're covered in build lines and texture so there's plenty of places for the glue to go into and uh, key into the part essentially. So we'll get those glued on and then we'll pop it back on. So that's pretty much the layout of it for now. Those are all the parts I'm going to make in this episode. Um, there are obviously more parts that need filling in. So I was thinking around these parts, it might be quite good to have some hoses here. So something like this perhaps poked in here, which then 
goes down and interacts with the thighs somehow. I haven't quite worked out how. Um, and it's possible I might shove some more conduit through here as well, so sort of something like this perhaps. Um, and we need to, to work out how that fits with the thighs. Got another piece there perhaps. Um, there's definitely going to be flexible tubes at least and some other bits and pieces that go down to the legs. So we've got some other features to add and we've still got some more of the frame to cover and we've also got some more fill-in sections um, around the rib area up higher up on the torso and we can work that out when we do the covers for the arm. So I also wanted to talk a bit about the Avengers Age of Ultron trailer that's come out. Thanks to everyone who sent me that. I got it about 50 to 100 times. Um, obviously Hulkbuster is in that trailer, or at least the one that's going to be in the movie. Um, so when I started this project, I, you know, I, I built the project with that in mind, but I didn't know what it was going to look like in the 2015 movie, of course. So uh, now I've seen it, um, it looks quite a bit different to what I've built. So I really enjoyed actually building this project and coming up with some of the ideas myself. So I think I'm going to carry on like that. There's probably going to be some inspiration taken from the movie Hulkbuster. Um, especially when I come to build the helmet, which is um, what I'm going to mention in the next Hulkbuster video. So I think in fact next time I'm going to try and sort out some shoulder cannons that pop out from behind these massive shoulder cavities and also think about how the helmet comes and flips over or flips up. So there's some stuff that happens in CGI that's impossible to do, like the helmet flipping out from behind the suit from nowhere, mainly because I've got other mechanics and things. Um, but the overall uh, image of the helmet is going to look a bit like the one in the Avengers trailer. So that's all I've got for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check out my social media links in the description to this video. And also my Patreon crowdfunding campaign where you can get some exclusive rewards including access to a live broadcast with me.